Welcome to James Hill TV, where we talk money, marketing, and motivation. I'm your host, James Hill. Today, we have two very special guests. This is a this is a first time podcast that I had an actual couple on that are in business together, and we're going to talk real estate specifically inspections in terms mm -hmm. of commercial and residential property, and um, also how you can actually build a business around you know build a business um, being an inspector. Um, because one thing I noticed about real estate. People always talking about flipping houses, right? That's you got the show about flipping mm -hmm. houses. People talking about, you know, love being a realtor because that's what's sexy, that's what you see. Mm -hmm. But most people don't know there's a real in between, a real process, and real people like yourself who are if more valuable like I would rather have a home inspector that does my property right than a realtor, because you can actually do a property yourself, right? Mm -hmm. I used to be a mortgage banker and a lot of people used to do that. I used to work for um Quicken Loans. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, before I left and, uh, and started this company, and um, I had a lot of people who were just, um, you know, do a deal from person to person, not yeah. have a realtor. Mm -hmm. But I made sure, like, well, we're not doing this deal if y'all don't get that property inspected, because the last thing you want to do is get to the closing and you know some twenty or thirty thousand um, mm -hmm. dollar something comes up with the inspection, and that kills the, the whole. Deal. I lost so many deals mm -hmm. <laughs> with bad inspections. Okay. So. Yep. I want to just first. I want you guys to definitely introduce yourself, um, talk about how you actually came about to getting into home inspections and real estate in general. So, okay, yeah. all right. Well, I'm Jock Mountain, uh, Dream Home Inspections, and of course, my wife Rashima. I actually got into home inspections because she was a loan officer. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, I love it. I love that it. was the catch. So. I was a shipping and receiving supervisor, mm -hmm. and I'm working 8 to 5, clocking in, shipping packages internationally. And when she got into loans, man, she's at the house. She closing, making more money than I'm making. Ooh, I'm like, wait a minute. Like, yeah. how is this happening, man? Like, okay, I know I can do something else, but I didn't know what I could do. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of went down the road of had a friend that was an electrician. Mm -hmm. He took me out, let me work with him some of the hardest work I ever did in my life. Yeah. I was like, mm -hmm. dude, I lasted two days. I was like, this ain't for me. <laughs> I had another buddy that was a plumber. He wouldn't even let me come out. Right. He was like, this is a stinky job. I'm yeah. not even. You got to get real yeah. dirty. Yeah, he was yeah. like, I'm not even going to let you start. And so I just worked my way down the path until inspections um, actually fit where I was looking for. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll stay with that part of it right there. Mm -hmm. but <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm Rashima Mountain, and. I did used to do loans. I did investments. Um, mm -hmm. I've always been in the financial uh, industry. So when we started the company, uh, like you said, he really was looking to do something where he could make his own schedule. You mm -hmm. know, that's real big. People want time freedom. Yeah. That is huge. And so for me, um, entering into the business of home inspections, my part was the business of the business right? because I had worked, I have a corporate America background mm -hmm. and I wanted to bring those same skills to our company mm -hmm. and make sure that we were set up right. My thing is, you know, let's do good business. Right. Mm -hmm. And so like I went on a couple of inspections and I was like, bro, this, you do the work of the inspection. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to make sure we stay straight. Right. right. Yeah. So I handle all the money, you the know, the paperwork. The yes, yes, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So that's how we make it a good partnership. Good yes. team. Yeah. I mean, that's really important because a lot of times when people are not you guys are a family business which is great mm -hmm. but that actually make does it make it harder i hear a lot of people talk about hey you can't do business with family right and it's hard to um work with someone and build something together when y'all might have a disagreement in the business but then is does that translate over into like your personal life and how do you guys balance that? Because oh, yeah. you I mean, I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm asking. Oh, of course, I'm asking course. as like this is like a selfish person. Yeah, exactly. because yeah. me and me and my girl, like we both are entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. and you know, we every time she's asking me for advice on something, and I'm asking her for her feedback on things, and we might clash on it. It, I don't want to. I don't want to. You know, I don't want that to come come over and. Um, intersect into our relationship, but it's it's going it's to. going it's to. going, it's going, going to. to. I I can't really avoid you it. So now nah, we just accept it. Like we just like whatever. Yeah. So we, how do you guys? Uh, deal with we've that? been married fifteen years. Mm -hmm. We've been in business fifteen years. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, we have done eight thousand plus inspections, mm -hmm. schools, churches, daycares, warehouses. It's gonna be some disagreements. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You can be mad in the house, and it's gonna come over to the business. You can be mad at the business, and it's gonna come, gonna come over to the house. Absolutely. <laughs> so that's gonna happen. So our thing is this. 
we are stubborn about the goal, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but we're flexible with the details on how to get there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The vehicle to get there. Yes. Okay. And so yeah. a lot of people get stuck on the vehicle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then, well, I want to do it X. I want to go 20. Yeah, and that's the only right. way I want to go 20. Well, you know, you can get off and take a side street and jump on 285 and get there a little faster. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so that's where you have to be flexible mm-hmm. with how are we going to get there. Because sometimes she has ideas, and I think we should do this, mark it this way. And I'm like, oh, I don't really like that. Mm-hmm. And then that turns into something. Right. But it may be right, and vice versa. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's going to come to the household. Just believe that. Mm-hmm. Oh, definitely. <laughs> like, you're going to be <laughs> challenged yes. often. Yes. Mm-hmm. But that's growth. If you want to build anything solid and long, like our thing is we want to build something that's going to keep going. Mm-hmm. Right. And we evolve as people. So the business is going to evolve. But the biggest thing is not being tunnel vision, Mm -hmm. but realizing that you have a partner that has another set of eyes that you don't see. Mm -hmm. And being willing to be flexible to know that you're not always right, even though you know you you know you're right, but Mm -hmm. you think you're right, but Mm -hmm. you're really not right. Mm -hmm. So for us, it has been communication is really big for us. Mm -hmm. Like we talk all All the time. time. But the thing about us that makes us stand apart is we have one vision. We right. notice with a lot of couples, the wife will have a vision, the husband will have a vision. And they never really sit down and talk about it. It's yeah. just like something that's just up in the air. It's like a gray area. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, you may be headed down one way thinking you're doing the best for her and the family. There you go. And you might be doing the exact there same thing, go. but the goal is here and y'all both are like, yep. Exactly. Going, y'all both going ahead. Like you feel like you're doing the best thing, and she yeah. feels like she's doing the best, but y'all not really getting there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So communication, understanding what the goal is, and understanding the why. Mm-hmm. And I don't know what person said the why behind the why. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we both have the same why and the why behind the why. Mm-hmm. So that makes it easier for us, like he said, to remain flexible about how we're going to get there because mm-hmm. we know we're working on one thing. Right. And mm-hmm. then we support each other's goals too. So it's yeah. not just I'm the inspector, build my business because out of my business, her business has grown mm-hmm. because people have come to us and said, well, man, you guys are so structured, so ordered. When we got ready to buy a house, the the uh, the mortgage people said we have never seen somebody's finances in order as yours. They were ready to close in two weeks to turn the documents in. Yeah, yeah they were yeah. like, well, how in the world? And I was like, well, that's her doing. That's what she does. You know, she mm-hmm. worked for Edward Jones and all these. You know, so she's oh, yeah, got yeah, she, that. She, she, you have to. Yeah. Do. So, but that's a, a that's another part of it. You know, we submit one to another. You know, I I support her stuff, and when she's going, she supports mine. But mm-hmm. it's the goal is mm-hmm. the home. Mm-hmm. We are building this for our family, for our home. So whatever that looks like, we become flexible for that. Now, mm-hmm. now with you guys being a family business, do you hire internal um, with throughout your family members? Have you did that? Have you had any success? My with son that? works Only for our me. Son. Mm-hmm. Yeah, full yes. time. Only yeah, our son. Yeah, so he's, he's full time inspector, but mm-hmm. everybody else that works for us has come through our training program. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we we're flexible. We allow them to have our own their own business mm-hmm. and subcontract with us. Mm-hmm. But the majority, you know, I guess the majority of the work that they have comes from us, but we still allow them to do their own. Right. Mm-hmm. Now, as an inspector, are you guys licensed by state? Is it something federal? Is it something by the county? Like, how does that work? No mm-hmm. certification in Georgia, no license in Georgia, nothing required to be an inspector. Mm-hmm. And I believe it's the same thing in uh, Michigan. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, Michigan, one of those. Yeah, so yeah. It's, it's about 20 states that have no license. Mm-hmm. So the only thing we do is we provide prof- professional training for anybody who wants to be an inspector, mm-hmm. and we also provide a mentorship program where we give you the whole inspection company in a box. Mm-hmm. So you don't have to go out here wondering and guessing, how do I make it work? How do I market? Where's my insurance come from we give you everything right How and that eight week program and then, and then she gives you the business side of yeah, it yeah setting mm-hmm. up your business right your llc whether you're going to do a s corp or not because a lot of people don't know what that is and when they should do a s corp mm-hmm. making sure you have an ein even though there's no licenses required we believe in being excellent and going the extra mile we right. require our mentorship students to get a license within their county of business mm-hmm. because other businesses have licenses, so we want to be those companies that have the license within the company mm-hmm. that we can do business, knowing what your operating agreement is. Mm-hmm. Um, this is one of my favorite things to tell our mentorship students. Everybody want to fire their boss, mm-hmm. and that's great, <laughs> but then you become the boss. Yeah. Who going to pay them taxes? 
who gonna take them taxes out? Yeah, right. <laughs> and it's like all this money start coming in. You gotta mm-hmm. realize all of it ain't yours, right. yeah. even though it is yours. But there's still a responsibility that we have as entrepreneurs to do the things that are right. Mm-hmm. You know, because it's right. So we have the section of the part where we teach them how to have a system of paying their taxes. Mm-hmm. How you gonna receive payment? You don't mm-hmm. wanna just go out and like, all right, you know, how you wanna pay me? But just be a professional and right. already have those things in place. I, I love, I love that you said that, especially about the taxes, because <laughs> my one of my close friends is a financial advisor, and um, you know, a lot of times he asks people, how much did you make last year? Like, especially entrepreneurs, because it's really hard when, you, especially when you first start making money, you yeah. don't really know how much money your company is making if you if you don't have all the systems and things in place to mm-hmm. know how much are you going to pay yourself in a salary? Yeah. How much are you going to pay in taxes? What's your profit and loss? Where's your break even point? A lot of people don't know this in business. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And when you ask them the question, okay, how much did you pay in taxes last year? And they say one number and he, well, you said you made $300,000 last year, but you only paid this much in taxes. So where's that money? There's a disconnect. Right. Mm-hmm. And then when you really get into nitty, the nitty gritty of someone's finances, you you start to realize where the leaks are, yeah. and, oh, yes. you know where they need adjustments at. So yeah. Um, now I read this in one of the, one of my favorite books. It's called the it's called the richest man in Babylon. Mm-hmm. And one thing mm-hmm. they talked about is um, having proper insurance or proper inspections, basically around your investment. They didn't really say inspections, but mm-hmm. in this case, it is talking about inspections. Mm-hmm. So basically, what they were saying is. If you're going to buy a hundred thousand dollar property and you think it's worth a hundred thousand dollars, and you don't get insurance on it or don't get it inspected, that thousand dollar inspection that you are turning down is actually worth the hundred thousand dollars that you are, you know, that you are buying. Because if you buy that property for a hundred thousand, and then now you got to put an extra thirty or forty in it because you didn't get the proper inspection, now that thousand dollar inspection or insurance or whatever that you mm-hmm. passed on being cheap it's actually worth that thirty thousand oh, yeah. dollars in equity you are going to miss if you had the proper professionals looking at it with their expertise instead of just you being excited about investing in a property so mm-hmm. is that how does that sound does that make sense in terms of how you guys operate and um communicate to your clients hey, you, no, go. you go ahead no, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, exactly. So we try to bring value to them with education. We are mm-hmm. all about education. We are big mm-hmm. on educating. Mm-hmm. So I'm educated by nature. I always say I'm a great, <laughs> great teacher, but I'm an excellent learner. Mm-hmm. I love to learn. And we bring the same thing because uh, we always talk, teach every client that we inspect for about the big five. Mm-hmm. You have HVAC, electrical, plumbing, roof, and foundation. Mm-hmm. Any of those five can cost you thousands of dollars, as mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. in a heartbeat. Yes. And then specifically in Atlanta, we have a defective roof that's all over in, in Metro Atlanta. Mm-hmm. So it's like, what do you mean by a defective roof? Like one company put up a roof that yeah. was defective? Yeah. And, and it's all over everywhere. It's been on the news multiple times. Oh, and people are law- lawsuit. But you'll buy that home and you won't even know it. You won't know mm-hmm. it. They got them on $800,000 homes in yeah. certain parts of the city and $80,000 homes in other parts of the city. Wow. So just that fee that you paid just might have saved you ten dollars or $15,000 mm-hmm. mm-hmm. because even the insurance companies won't replace it right? because it's in the class action lawsuit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we definitely stress do not, do not buy a home without that inspection because it's going to save you in the end. Mm-hmm. Well, I was gonna say when uh, I don't know if a lot of people know that before I even met him, I was investing in property. I met him, single mom, um, was buying real estate, and mm-hmm. I was getting an inspection. Mm-hmm. I already had, you know, what my profit was gonna be. I was gonna get this money back. I was gonna rehab it. You know all the <laughs> yeah. exciting stuff. And the <laughs> inspector, the non-excited, just third-party guy came out. And I will never forget this. He came out. He did the inspection. And then he informed me and the general contractor what was wrong. And I was able to get an accurate estimate of what the repairs would be. Mm -hmm. And it was beyond what I was prepared to spend. Right. And so I was able to make an educated decision for my situation Mm -hmm. by having an inspection to help me know, should I even go down this road? And that's what we encourage people. First time home buyers, repeat home buyers, especially investors. Mm -hmm. Know what you're spending your money on. What's a couple of hundred dollars in comparison to 
what you're about to get in return. We got to start looking at what's the return that I'm getting versus the couple of hundred dollars that I'm spending. Mm -hmm. So that's what we really try to educate people on is that experience of knowing, being confident in what you're buying and what you're walking into Mm -hmm. by getting an inspection. Yeah, I learned the hard way, and it wasn't with real estate. Um, I learned in college about, like, just making sure you protect your assets and protect your investment before you do it. I remember Mm -hmm. my first car. So my first car, my uncle gave me. So it was just like a gift. So I didn't get that inspected. It was riding for about 18 months and then it went out and I Mm -hmm. just was like, you know, it was free. So I got my money's worth. And then, you know, I saved up my money, got a refund check and goes up to this used car lot. And my girlfriend at the time was telling me like, I don't know about that car. Like you should look into getting a different car, but I was, it was such a good deal. I'm mm-hmm. like, no, I, I have to, I have to, you know, the salesman got me. He like, yeah. well, you know, we got somebody else thinking about getting right. it and all yeah. that. And it was a real good deal. And then it was this guy that, um, he, that's what he does. He inspect cars in the local area. He had like his own shop and he inspect cars in a local area. And he like, yeah, I charge you 200 for this or that. And I'm just like, no, I you know, I just spend the money and I paid like twenty five hundred dollars for this car. Mm. And if I would have spent the extra two hundred dollars, it would have saved me that twenty five hundred. So long story short, two months down the road, I'm on the side of the freeway because my oil pan and cracked and oh. I you know, my whole engine blew up. It, it it was ridiculous. It was like my whole car was leaking oil. So the car was it was it was a wrap. So in two months I lost twenty five hundred dollars. And it would have cost me two hundred dollars just to find that he would have just probably went in there, looked under the hood. Oh no, this is a bad deal, mm-hmm. and I would have yeah. moved on. But because I was being cheap with getting my investment protected, yeah, yes. you know, it, it cost me a lot. So I learned early. So yeah, you know, when I'm ready to buy a house, I'm for sure I want two <laughs> inspections. Right. I don't want okay. one. <laughs> now, are there different? type of inspections you have to get so is it like levels to an inspection or is it just one standard procedure that your your company offers no uh, we got one standard mm-hmm. i mean we trying to so uh, of course we, we do thermal imaging mm-hmm. infrared camera we got drones what, what, what is that Could so you... thermal imaging is it helps us see it doesn't help us see through walls it's not x-ray vision mm-hmm. uh do you remember the movie predator yeah, alien yeah, versus yeah. predator remember mm-hmm. predator got that vision where if something's hot he can see it bright yellow mm-hmm. something's yeah. cold it shows up bluish purple mm-hmm. so we have a camera that does that okay so we scan the home and it shows us stuff that normally you can't see with your regular eye mm-hmm. so just like you uh if you're drinking water and I scanned you with the camera. Your body would show a bright yellow. Mm-hmm. The water would show a blue because it's cold. Because it's cold, mm-hmm. right. So if we scan the ceiling and there's a leak up there, before it even shows up in the home, we'll see a big blue stain. Mm-hmm. Wow. We can scan breakers in the electric panel. That before they, they start overheating, we mm-hmm. can catch that. Yep. So it helps us catch things. Then we use a drone, fly over the house, all of those type of things. Okay. So uh, we don't charge extra for all those things because it helps us do a better inspection. Some right. companies charge you for each yeah, add yeah, on they want to keep upselling yeah you but make sense, yeah right? but i want to i want to know it for my own benefit mm-hmm. you see what i mean just try to provide you with the best inspection possible mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah so we want to look at everything we can now of course if you start adding on mold lead based paint those are lab yeah, tests yeah, so those are additional yeah things. that's something mm-hmm. i wanted to go into yeah. too because a lot mm-hmm. of people don't understand how that can affect your home i actually had someone in my family that um they kept getting sick and they didn't know like why they kept getting sick. And when they go to the hospital, it was it wasn't like a flu. It wasn't like nothing. But they had bought a property, and then I guess the property has some type of mold or something going on with mm-hmm. it that just kept making them sick. Mm-hmm. And mold is something that it's not going to. It, I, don't, I don't know if it can kill you or not, but it's probably going to just a mess with your immune system and mess with mm-hmm. just you in general. And then until you get it checked out, you're not going to really know. So that's what I that's what I meant by mm. is there a standard, and is there other things like that covers the full house. Like if I was buying a, a mansion or whatever, mm-hmm. and I'm like, look, I have the money to buy everything and I need just my whole entire investment protected. What would all come with that? If you want to do everything, everything uh, yes. mold, lead-based paint, I mean, that's radon. It, radon. Oh, yeah, that's radon. What, radon, is radon. radon. what is radon? Oh, oh okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we so used to letting <laughs> each other talk. Up. All right. So radon. <laughs> It's just a naturally occurring gas. It mm-hmm. comes up out of the ground. It's all over the United States. It is the number two cause of lung cancer in America. Wow. The only thing that causes more lung cancer is cigarette smoke. Wow. So 
we set up a tester in the basement because radon builds up in the home. And if you stay in the home for a long period of time, breathe in that area and it's going to cause lung cancer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we would test for radon. We would test for mold. If it was built before 1978, lead-based paint. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you'd end up with a $1,000 plus inspection mm -hmm. with all those tests. Mm -hmm. Now, what are some things and some tips on building your business or the system, the systems to grow a business mm -hmm. as an inspector or just a, a business person in general mm -hmm. focusing on real estate. Cause I feel like it's, it's so easy to start a business just going to get an LLC, going mm -hmm. to get a website. Now mm -hmm. you can YouTube everything, but you as a business professional coming from corporate America, seeing how business works on a large scale mm -hmm. and now being able to apply that to your family business and grow that. Like what are some things that you see, that needed to be implemented, um, especially like with working with your working with your spouse. Mm -hmm. What are some blind sides that mm -hmm. he he didn't see mm -hmm. that um, you had to assist him with to grow the business? Uh, systems, mm -hmm. and this is what I mean by that. Like if you go to Company A, they right. have office hours. Right. So establishing office hours, they have a mission. They have policies they mm -hmm. have procedures that they follow every time kind of like uh sports like the fundamentals right like people will know what to expect when they work with your company like how are they going to book an inspection with you mm -hmm. once they book an inspection what can they expect when you get out there how long are you going to be out there mm -hmm. when you're out there like the things that we just talked about what are we going to do mm -hmm. okay now that you're out there you need to have an agreement they need to sign an inspection agreement mm -hmm. that you are giving them permission. I am giving, I'm getting permission to do this inspection mm -hmm. because if not, you have no coverage with your insurance. Mm -hmm. So it's little stuff like this that people overlook because they don't think is nearly as important is important, but every inspector should have an inspection agreement mm -hmm. before they actually perform an inspection. Mm -hmm. And then how are you going to get paid? Like, we want our inspectors to go beyond Cash App. No no shade against <laughs> Cash App. Right. Yeah, no yeah. shade at all. Cash App is good for mm -hmm. what it's good for. Mm -hmm. But we're talking about being a professional company. Are you going to use Square or PayPal? What are you going to use to collect your payment? So people will know that they're not just dealing with Joe or Mary Smith, that mm -hmm. I'm actually dealing with a company. Right. And then, like I said, talking about, you know, making sure that you have the entities where you need to pay your taxes since we're in Georgia, mm -hmm. Georgia Department of Tax, you know, Department of Revenue, mm -hmm. the federal, um, if you are an employee, like mm -hmm. you said, knowing when you should be an employee mm -hmm. of your company. So those are like the basic, I take our um, mentorship students through a 10 step process. Mm -hmm. And so those are the basics outside of the LLC, the EIN, the business license within their county. Mm -hmm. And the additional more advanced, like I said, is the taxes and what's the written agreement? What are you gonna be liable for mm -hmm. if someone calls you back? Right. So we talk to them about, you know, having waivers. What will your insurance cover? Mm -hmm. So all of those things actually go into the business structure of doing a home inspection. And then when it comes to building a business, uh, we stress use your platform to establish yourself as the expert. Mm -hmm. Yes. On Instagram, I'm big on teaching, training, educating. You know, my turn up is not for the public. <laughs> yes. You know, my, it, my yeah. turn up is, is for whoever I'm turning up with. Yeah. Right. But when I get on, I'm, I'm saying uh, establish yourself as the expert. Mm -hmm. You know, like when I got on your page, I went through, I watched some videos, I watched some interviews. I knew what to expect coming right. here. Mm -hmm. You know, I told her, I said, look, we're going to have to wear headphones. She was like, oh, really? I was like, yeah, I was on there watching some interviews. Yeah. So you're establishing what people can expect from you mm -hmm. right and so when they get there they know okay he's about business she's about business they're gonna do this thing not they gonna have hookah and <laughs> and dropping it at the at the, at meeting, the, home, at the inspection. home inspection right so yeah so it's about building the business has really been about education for us yeah mm -hmm letting people know what to expect yeah i think i mean i think that's really important in terms of separating your your personal life and the things you have going on because we are human we enjoy ourselves have a good time mm -hmm. but i think social media has made it um popular to you know you be on your business page and you're showing that you are out at the club or you are out doing something that doesn't speak to the professionalism of your business mm -hmm. so um i want to ask you guys what's the what's the big difference between uh, property inspection with commercial property versus uh, residential property because I think 
residential property is something most of people are familiar with. Everybody want to buy a home. Everybody mm-hmm. probably knows somebody who owns a home. Mm-hmm. Um, but a- in terms of being a business owner, buying commercial property and things of that nature, what are, what are some differences between the inspection that as a business owner, and I'm looking to acquire some property, mm-hmm. you know, in the few, uh, in the next few years. So I'm kind of asking for my personal, yeah. like, mm-hmm. like what, what should I be looking for? Um, versus commercial versus um, it really depends on what you purchase Mm -hmm. Uh, this building that we're in is basically a residential building Mm -hmm. Um, you know I looked at when I pulled up you know you got a residential roof on here Mm -hmm. because there's so many units each person has their own HVAC you got your own what so this is really a commercial building Mm -hmm. but it's got residential right elements Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now when I've done warehouses when I've done churches uh, then you get more into the commercial aspect where we're going to need some additional inspections. Mm-hmm. Uh, matter of fact, we did a big church up here mm-hmm. uh, right off of Jimmy Carter. You know, 30,000 square feet. Right. Well, that's not a residential roof. You need commercial roofing, commercial mm-hmm. HVAC, you know, those mm-hmm. type of things. So it just depends on the size of the building and what you're going to do in the building. And y'all using drones. That's kind of like forward-thinking technology. Is that something that's standard in the industry, or that's something it's optional. one of y'all came up yeah. with and it was like, hey, this can add value to our customers? Yeah, it's, it's yeah. optional. It's just adding value. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you do a mansion, you can't see the whole roof. Right. right. So the home inspection standards just say inspect the roof. We are not supposed to walk on the roof ever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. None of the national organizations want you to walk on the roof, and our home inspection insurance definitely doesn't want you walking on <laughs> right. it. They're yeah. like, do not walk on it, period. Mm-hmm. But we use that drone to fly over it to scan the roof to see what's going on. And then, it, like you said, if it's a commercial building, if you were buying something that big, I did a church, 30,000 square feet, I paid a commercial roofer to come out and inspect it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So you guys don't do everything um, in terms of when you want to offer a, a top-tier service to yeah, your exactly. clients. Exactly. Sometimes, you know, it's like, okay, I probably could learn and do this, but it's better to hire the expert yes, to sir. have them come in. That's a really good point because, yeah. um, you know, especially me being a new entrepreneur and, you know, I'm trying to save as much money as possible. Mm-hmm. I learned that it costs me more money, especially in time and having to go over something two or three times and making mistakes when I could have just hired an expert up front, pay whatever, you know, service fee they, they charge. And then actually, I can sleep well at night knowing this job has yes. been done compared to me trying to do it by myself on YouTube, Googling oh, stuff. YouTube look, University. Yeah, YouTube mm-hmm. University. Mm-hmm. YouTube University. It's, it's a gift and a curse because it's free. And, you know, that's which is great. But then it's free, <laughs> which, is, uh, which is not always the best thing to do when you're looking to make uh, an actual investment. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about, um, like, working with investors and people who are looking to like rehab homes. I was on your website and you guys um, talk about the 203k loans and mm-hmm. things like that. So could you first walk people through what is a 203k loan and um, how it can be beneficial to acquiring real estate and how you guys work together to help investors or home buyers um, work with the 203k loans? Okay, so the 203k loan is the excellent loan Mm -hmm. (laughs) if you want to renovate your own home and live in it Mm -hmm. so um, there's the 203k and there's the home style this is when you're purchasing the home yourself and you can flip it with your own contractor so it's it's perfect you can take down walls finish floors ceilings whatever you want to do to it you got your own hgtv going on Mm -hmm. my part is to come through and walk with you through the process and then I let the mortgage company know, hey, this has been done properly. Go ahead and pay the contractor, mm-hmm. and it just finishes uh, the process. Mm-hmm. Now, when it comes to investors, just straight up investors, right? Uh, I teach at those seminars all the time mm-hmm. because they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they just got a pocket full of money, and you know they. So, so honestly, uh, renovations are our worst inspections every mm-hmm. day. Mm-hmm. The worst. Capital T H E W O R R S T. Because you have doctor, lawyer, school teacher, somebody who's got this big lump of sum of money. Mm-hmm. They're calling the contractor. I got this house. I want to renovate it. Mm-hmm. How can you oversee what you don't understand? Right. And so by the time I come out there, the electrical's wrong, the plumbing's wrong, mm. the foundation's wrong. 
just so many things are wrong and they're going i just paid this man x amount of thousands and i'm like but he didn't do it right mm-hmm. so the now cheapest right the cheapest, cheapest contractor so now i've been invited to the seminar so i can train the first time investors right mm-hmm. saying call us first let us inspect it for you let us inspect along the way so that you can produce a good product mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because that's the problem the man it, it's 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 bad mm-hmm. you had mentioned something a few minutes ago about not doing it yourself mm-hmm. and i can sleep better at night yeah at the end of the day we want excellent products right and it's okay not to know everything Mm -hmm. but be a master of what you are a master at Mm -hmm. i'm not a master at roofing Mm -hmm. we can look at a roof i can tell you some things about a roof i can expect but i'm not doing putting on roofs every day right Mm -hmm. and i don't want to go get my uncle (laughs) <laughs> who may have put on a roof way back in we the day. We always got it. I mean, I know I got Everybody three got uncles. An uncle. yeah, I got yeah. three uncles. Everybody right. got an uncle. Yeah. Or we hire people <laughs> because they give us the cheapest rate, mm-hmm. have no idea what their credibility is mm-hmm. because of what? We trying to take the easiest way out. When it's going to be a nightmare in the long run. Mm-hmm. So if we just do the right things up front and be, a, be great at what you're great at and let other people be great at what they're great at, mm-hmm. then you'll get through it quicker because you can't be successful by yourself. Right. Yeah, like yeah. success is a team effort, mm-hmm. especially when you're dealing with some a house that you're trying to sell somebody. Yeah. Like people are going to be living there. <laughs> right. <laughs> like what is it to you to make? 10,000 versus 12,000. Right. Yes, yeah, an extra two grand that you can go buy your bag or your shoe, whatever your right, thing. Right. Everybody got a Everybody thing. Everybody got mm-hmm. their thing. Right. But at the end of the day, well, who's the end buyer of this? Mm-hmm. Like somebody's mama, somebody's grandma, could be like somebody like me. I was a single mom. Mm-hmm. Like somebody's going to be living in this. Mm-hmm. And we want to give people the best, especially when it's in our power to do that. So mm-hmm. that's my take on investments. Like, no, if you don't know, hire somebody that does. Right. Mm-hmm. So we can produce good products for people in the marketplace. Mm-hmm. Now I don't know if it's something you guys teach your uh, like your the people that come through your course or your class, but how do you establish relationships with um, real estate professionals like realtors and brokers and things like that? So I feel like when you're going through the home buying process, and this is how it was from my experience as um, as a mortgage banker when I was talking to clients, they're very emotional, right? Mm-hmm. And I don't know, you can correct me, you can <laughs> tell me your experience, but the financing person was the person that they, the last person they wanted to talk to, they wanted to talk to their realtor. Yeah. Absolutely. They wanted, because realtor that's the person the that's dream. showing them the house yes. and they rely on the realtor for everything. So. You know, me telling somebody, yeah, you need to get, you need to pay that seven hundred dollars or eight hundred dollars or four hundred, five hundred to get that home inspected. They're looking at me like, okay, and then I'm looking at all their finances. It's just a lot going on in there. But the realtor recommending it is like, oh, the realtor, I trust, I trust her, I trust him. I know mm-hmm. they know what they're doing, right? Mm-hmm. So, how is it establishing business relationships with those influential people like brokers and real estate agents? Is that mm-hmm. something you guys teach your 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 um clients who come through the mentorship program mm-hmm. yes yes mm-hmm. so you were <laughs> <laughs> we do this okay. often. <laughs> yes we do uh we teach them how to first of all do what's free mm-hmm. because most people who are starting the business don't have a lot of startup cash mm-hmm. so instagram clubhouse linkedin those are your friends right now yeah mm-hmm. get your name out there and uh, once again establish yourself as the expert mm-hmm. and then we teach them also look professional look the part Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, our our counterparts, they look the part. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you can't show up sagging. Mm-hmm. You can't show up blinging. <laughs> you can't show up, you know. So yeah. you got you got to look the part. And so I talk to them about dress. I talk to them about uh, hygiene. I talk to them about uh, you know what you drive, when you drive it. Mm-hmm. You know. So the whole thing on establishing because uh, I think uh, you and I had this conversation uh, earlier. This is a transaction. Right. Mm-hmm. You're just a part of it. Mm-hmm. You know, from the loan officer to the realtor to the inspection to the closing attorney. It's a transaction. Right. Mm-hmm. And we want to make sure, especially for our community, that we're providing the best and we're looking the best. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, so I don't care if you got dreads, a beard, bald head, but look your best, mm-hmm. be your best when you show up. So that's what mm-hmm. we teach them to, to build the professional uh, relationships. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's easy to establish credibility when you do a good job. Mm-hmm. Right. And you can be counted on. 
if you're going to be late, let them know you're going to be late. Mm-hmm. But don't be late every time. Right. Like, something happened. Okay, we live in Atlanta. Some traffic. Yeah, traffic. Right. You got to add 30 minutes on you know, everything. <laughs> but if you're going to be late, let them know you're going to be late. Right. Mm-hmm. We our reports by a certain time. Mm-hmm. So people, like with any other business, what are they expecting of you? Mm-hmm. And give them a little more than that. Like, that's just basic principle law of success, mm-hmm. you know. So it's easy to establish a relationship with people when you can be trusted and depended on. Mm-hmm. So, you know, everybody know a realtor, a cousin, somebody's yeah, co-worker. Everybody, yeah, yeah. everybody knows a realtor. Mm-hmm. So do a good job for this person. You mm-hmm. know, if they trust you, like, I'm going to give you a chance, do an excellent job. Mm-hmm. And then ask for feedback. You know, ask for feedback on how – what did the buyer think? What did you think? And if it ain't going to take you all off the grid of who you are, make the adjustments. Be mm-hmm. willing to listen to professionals that have been out there long enough to know what the market is asking for, mm-hmm. you know, in those relationships. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think business relationships are very important. Mm-hmm. And um, just bring being able to bring your full self and what you do to mm-hmm. the table and partner with somebody to make, like you said, the transaction. It's a full transaction it's pr- i don't think a lot of people know how many people are involved in buying a house mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. when i was a when i was at quicken loans you know the reason they may the reason they are even relevant in terms of um the the home buying financing process because they are a lot more expensive than everyone else mm-hmm. but the reason they're relevant is because they have they're very fast and quick and they got so many people working on one loan it just makes it like an assembly line and and once i looked at that i was like Oh, wow. These are all the people who are working on just the financing end of it. Just imagine the people who are on the ground, the appraiser, the inspector, the real estate agent, mm-hmm. the broker. It's a lot of people that goes into this. Um, I wanted to ask you guys, how long does it actually take to, like, I know it depends on probably square feet and how big mm-hmm. the house is, but mm-hmm. typically, um, how long would it take to, to get an inspection? Uh, two hours. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, we give two hours per house. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And the bigger it is, of course, more time. Mm-hmm. And then we offer next day turnaround on the inspection. So my team knows if you go out today, Monday, Tuesday morning, they should have that inspection report. Mm-hmm. That's our standard. Mm-hmm. But we that's how we're building the relationship, just what you just said earlier. You know when you go to Chick-fil-A, yeah. <laughs> you, <laughs> you already know what you're going to get. Right. At the end, you, my pleasure. <laughs> you know you know you're going to get that. Mm-hmm. Right. So, yeah, we're establishing that standard. Two hours, and then, of course, the bigger will stay there longer. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Now, um, in terms of in terms of investors, right? Mm-hmm. So when y'all when y'all when you go into these seminars, are the investors being receptive? Are you charging the investors the same amount as you would charge a residential um, a residential client, or is mm-hmm. it because you know? Because sometimes if you charge somebody who's about to make money off a property, you can you can you, there's room to maybe charge them more because they're looking at it as a flip and not necessarily a home. Mm-hmm. Is that something that y'all do or y'all, or y'all just standard? Same. It's standard. Yeah. Because yeah. 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 we, we, you know, no matter where you go in America, you're going to run into that big five. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The roof, foundation, heat, air, electrical, plumb. It's, it's everywhere. So with the investor, we do a little more um, hands-on, mm-hmm. talking about code compliance, making sure you people pull permits, all of those type of things. We, I just did an inspection last uh, Monday. Lady was looking at this nice home, had been renovated, going for right at $400,000. And as I was going through it, I kept saying, ma'am, I don't think they pulled permits on this. Mm -hmm. I said, some of this stuff is just done wrong. Mm -hmm. I said, but it looks amazing in here. Right. I drove past there the next day on my way home. The county had two stop work orders posted up on the house. Mm -hmm. And I sent them to the realtor. He said, oh, my God. He said, you said it. Right. Because the county didn't know. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to tell the investors don't sneak past permits. Permits are for your protection. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Permits help you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, is the per- permits, is that something that you work with um, people on? Because that's something, that's another thing, like, systems and things people don't know on the business side when they want to get into real estate. They just think they're buying a property. And it's a lot that goes into buying a property, zone rights, all type of things. Mm-hmm. Is that something that you help people with or something you coach people through? No, I don't. Okay. You know, we tell our in, our inspectors, mm-hmm. you know, if you're doing a rehab, that anytime you make improvements, adding value, there are, you know, 
things that you have to go like what okay. he said the permits mm. that's the only thing that we do but we don't actually like coach them on the transaction on their part to make sure that their contractor is pulling permits no okay so that's you just basically letting them know like hey this is something you know while you're working on this project here's a checklist of things you need to yes. make sure the person that you're working with mm -hmm. have before you know everybody gets stopped like you said with the with the project mm -hmm. i want to talk about the um um the schooling aspect and the teaching aspect because you guys are building a business you're successful at it and now you have a purpose of actually teaching people and bringing people into the business because especially our community um you know this is new this is new to us right. a lot mm -hmm. of us are just first time home buyers or you know the first people to actually can actually go buy a house and mm -hmm. buy our dream homes and things mm -hmm. like that so we don't know about the inspector, the appraiser, and all these other people. We only know about the real estate agent mm -hmm. because that's what's on TV and that's what we see. Right. Um, is, is that something that drove you guys to start teaching, especially teaching in our community and bringing people in? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> what is the list that wanted? Oh, man. So let me tell you what happened. Mm -hmm. All right. So first of all, it's very few African-American inspectors. Mm hmm so when people would see me, they would just stop me at Lowe's, Home Depot. Hey, man, you an inspector? Mm -hmm. Home inspector? This your company? Because, I, I, of course, you got to work for somebody else. You couldn't have your own. Right. So I would say, this is my company. Yes, I'm doing it full time. So over the years, people just kept asking me, will you train me? Will right. you train me? No, I won't train you. I don't have time to train you. Go online. Go take the course. Right. And it finally got to the point where... It was just a demand. Right. So you're kind of leaving money on the table or just opportunity. Mm -hmm. I just didn't want to do it, period. I didn't have time. Mm -hmm. Right. That's just like if I keep seeing you say, James, teach me how to run a studio. <laughs> teach me how to run a studio. You're like, dude, I don't have time to teach you how to run a studio. Yeah. But it just became a demand. And I finally said, okay, you know what? I'm going to put together a class. I'm going to start teaching it. And let's see where it goes. Mm -hmm. And, of course, after people come out, they do what we tell them. After time, it's like, man, you know what? I worked myself off my job. Mm -hmm. You know what? Um, I'm keeping my job, but I made thirty thousand dollars part time last year. Wow! Mm -hmm. Oh man, you know what? Um, I made sixty grand last year, but I still kept my job. One guy was like, "You know what? I worked so hard last year, I made more money going. Uh, I started losing money going to work." Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Because his wife, because um, this was a true story. One of my guys, um, he was on the phone, had an inspection call, and he canceled it. And his wife said, "Did I just hear you cancel the inspection?" He said, well, "Yeah." She said, "Why?" He said, "Cause I got to go to work." She said, but you make $17 an hour. And he was like, right. <laughs> she was like, even if you work 10 hours, that's $170. You just canceled a $350 inspection. Right. Mm -hmm. So he called me. He was like, what do I do? I said, well, y'all got to talk about your numbers. What does yeah, it take yeah, for yeah. you in inspections to – so eventually he left. Mm -hmm. So it just became a demand. Mm -hmm. And now our drive is – Let's get it to our community mm -hmm. because we don't know. And then still, even when I go to the meetings, the national meetings or the local meetings, I'm still, I'm still the drop in the bucket. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, the the home inspection field right now is predominantly older white men. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you know, when I go to a meeting and there's five of us, I, the other four probably came with me. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So we right. are definitely trying to get it to our community now. As an alternative, and especially with my son. My son's 21. Mm -hmm. He came out of high school. He didn't want to go to college. So now he works with us full time. I mean, right. he's been inspecting four or five years. Mm -hmm. But he loves real estate. Right. So now we're driving to say, okay, you know what? This next generation needs to know you don't have to go to college to be successful. Yeah. Yeah, so that's where we are. Yeah, and that's, and that's the reason I definitely wanted you guys on. Because I'm like, this is another alternative to, because I always preach about, you know, multiple streams of income. You want to make sure you are able to, you know, especially things now, like what happened with COVID, a lot of people had these good middle management jobs and they thought they was living it up. You know, I had a friend buy a house and three weeks later, you know, last February, they bought a house. They're all happy. Three weeks later, the coronavirus hit and, you know, they got that call like, well, we're reevaluating some things mm -hmm. and we're going to kind of buy you out. We'll give you three months of pay, but you can either accept that and lower your salary by $20,000 and, you know, limit your benefits, or we just got to let you go mm. because business is going to stop for the next couple months. And they had to make a real tough decision. And I always told them, Hey, if you guys would have had that side business, like I was telling you, like, even though you, you're, you're, you're good making 50 and $60,000 on your job, what's wrong with making an extra 20 or $30,000 yes. doing something mm. yes. on the side 
And then when that starts to pick up, you can make a decision on, yeah. do I really need this job? And that's really what happened with me and mm. in my company. You know, I started this company with $150. Okay. Right. And I just bought a website, got a, you know, the domain name and, you know, built a website and all that and start educating people about financial literacy and things of that nature on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then start taking off and start taking off. And I'm, I'm doing everything from my phone. Mm -hmm. So I started working from home because of COVID. So I'm making money from my job and my phone. So I'm just sitting there like, okay. And then, you know, my girl at the time was like, well, why, why you not going, um, why you not going to quit? And then I'm like, well, I'm not going to quit because I'm making both incomes. Right. right. Why would I right. need to, right. you know, why would I need to get rid of this one? And then when it started making sense, when she was saying like, I was getting speaking engagements for thousands of dollars to do X, Y, Z, or I'm turning people down. Like you said, mm -hmm. if they trying to pay me five, 600 to do this yeah. and uh, instead I'm going to work and I'm making 20, $25 an hour. You know, and it's like, it don't really make sense it to, to, to still do that. So I had to really look at my numbers and say, okay, if I do this three times a week, it's going to, and, and that cost, I mean, that's taken me four or five hours to do. Mm -hmm. I make the same amount just working 40 hours a week over here. Yes. So if I can build this business up consistently and at least do three deals a week, mm -hmm. then that's something I can actually replace my job. And that's something me and you talked about. Mm -hmm. Like, so... Talk about this. Um, how much does the average inspector, how much can they, you know, look to make? You know, you got the top tier people who's going to hit the ground running and, you know, be mm -hmm. one percenters, top five percent income, whatever. Mm -hmm. Then you got the people who are probably just going to do it. Not really serious. And they just signed up. And then you got the, you know, the average people mm -hmm. that if they just do exactly what you guys told them to do, get the systems, get everything. Mm -hmm. What can someone expect to make, um, you know? doing let's just say three inspections a week the average home inspection is 350 dollars. that's mm -hmm. just your mm -hmm. three bedroom four bedroom house no basement mm -hmm. and if you just did three a week mm -hmm. three inspections a week you get a thousand and fifty dollars mm -hmm. that's a fifty thousand dollar a year salary and you're not working 40 hours a week right right so if you did an inspection on monday wednesday and friday you have 50, 50 grand a year mm -hmm. and so the guy I was telling you about he kept his job all he did was two a weekend, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. seven hundred a weekend, twenty eight hundred a month mm -hmm. over a year. Can't beat it. So he was right at thirty grand, but he kept his job, and his job was paying him fifty. Mm -hmm. So he called and was like, "Look, man, if I made thirty part time, and I'm working forty hours a week to make fifty, how can I, you know?" But he, hey, his wife was happy. You got eighty grand coming in. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, just your average inspector. If you just did three a week, you're looking at a thousand dollars a week. Now you can set your own schedule in terms of when you want to do it. Yes, so, sir. Yeah. yeah. So you don't have to do it like between the regular work hours. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does the does the we client have to be there? Team. Does the mm -hmm. client have to be there to do it? All right. She said we don't start till ten o'clock. Yeah, we we skip traffic and everything. No, mm -hmm. but the client does not have to be there. Okay. No. Yeah, I mean, I'm thinking, I'm just thinking in my mind, like, my <laughs> friends be calling me because they see me doing my stuff, and they like, you know, I'm trying to figure out how to transition, and now this can be an option. I can be like, well, listen, you know, you say you like real estate, right. but, you know, you don't have no money to buy no property right now, so learn the business of there real estate mm -hmm. and make money while you're doing it. Build mm -hmm. a business, and you can become a real estate investor, but, you know. Listen, it, being an inspector, and this is my son just starting to see this this last couple of weeks. We add value everywhere we go. Mm -hmm. I just did an apartment complex last week, uh, 28, 30 units, because I can walk to any property and know what's wrong with it mm -hmm. more than the investor does. Wow. He's dependent on me to right. tell him what needs to be done and how it needs to be done. And then he's sitting there writing it down going, okay, Jock, based on what you just told me, this is a bad deal. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's yeah. what I was going. That's what I wanted to yeah. get into. Like, yeah. So. This is this is like the best hands-on school a real estate investor yes. can have instead of you know, like hey, what's the point? Of, like you said, what's the point of if you if you're going to get into real estate, you know, and you don't have money, this is the best way to get in to learn the business and learn how to evaluate properties. So when you have money, mm -hmm. you know, you have the knowledge and the money. I always tell people you at least have to have the knowledge or the money. Yes. Mm -hmm. Other than that, if you ain't got one of the two, mm -hmm. you're not even yeah. in the deal. Right. Yeah. Right. right. So yeah. you can that's start real. with the knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. That is excellent. Yeah, that's excellent, yeah. man. And then once you get in, uh, we've had guys who got in, 
started learning the industry and they was like man you know what i really love electricity mm-hmm. we had a guy go off become an electrician mm-hmm. yeah we've had guys go into heating and air um i knew a guy who started duck cleaning business so mm-hmm. once you see the field and you understand the need it still opens up other doors. Now, can yeah. can can felons anyone get into it? Is yeah. it just a wide open business? It's wide, wide open, open in Georgia. Business. No background check, no credit check. Wow. It's it's and it's yours. Mm-hmm. Yes, it's just really about the skill and having. It's about the skill yeah. and having a mentor. Everybody's got a coach. Mm-hmm. Michael Jordan had a coach. LeBron's got a coach. Every great person has a coach. Mm-hmm. So that's what we're offering. We're saying, listen, we've been doing this fifteen years. We we good, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. one day. We may not be doing it. Here's your opportunity to learn it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, can you guys talk about the process of getting involved with you as a, you know, as a student? W- yes. What's the process? Um, is it virtual? Is it in, you know, is it in person? Like, how can people get involved? Okay. So, all of our training is live. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we want hands-on in the classroom. Uh, we do have virtual, but right now we want you there with us yeah, because we want you to see it. Yeah, you probably have to really yeah, see. Yeah, yeah. Right? We want hands-on with you, and then we take them out. So. Uh, to sign up, you can go online. Mm-hmm. We have our course online, but then our mentorship, you would have to call us for that mm-hmm. so we could talk up to you more in depth about what we do and what we offer. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, you go online and sign up on our website, dreamhomeinspection.org. Uh, mm-hmm. But we want you there in class so we can teach you. You can put your hands on it. You can touch it, feel it, you know, the stuff we have in the class, the mm-hmm. plumbing, pipes, mm-hmm. and the wood and all this. And then we take you out into the field. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you need to be there in person. How many? How many days? Is it's it? three days in person, and then we got training online before and after the class. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, how? So are you looking at like a two week, two week turnaround in terms of not knowing anything to a week? No. Oh, oh, okay, a week. Mm-hmm. So not knowing anything to to be ready to go inspect your first property? At least a basic one. Yeah, basic. that's what I was going to ask. Mm-hmm. Is it levels to it? Like, oh, do you yeah. want to go out and yeah. inspect no, your No, no, inspect no. We don't want to go in sp- no mansions <laughs> and, and not your grandma's 1972, 65 mm-hmm. home. Mm-hmm. So my, my objective is when they finish that course, they should be able to go to a basic home, just mm-hmm. a three-bedroom, two-bath, on the ground, or a town home. And you should understand how to inspect it and write the report. Mm-hmm. Now, you start talking about uh, downtown Atlanta, uh, them old homes that's 1962 and 43. Mm-hmm. No, you're not ready for that. Now, mm-hmm. are you, now I um, follow this couple on um, Instagram, and they are really big in mobile homes. Is yes. that something you guys inspect? Yes, we yes. inspect everything. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because that's becoming really popular because they're, they're a young couple. I think mm-hmm. they're like 30 or something. Up in uh, Chicago? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I yeah. follow them too. I follow them, yeah. yeah. And mm-hmm. they, um, because I actually wanted to get into that, but I just was like, no, I'm going to just stick to my business and grow. And then when I need to diversify, I probably reevaluate it. But um, I looked into that and I didn't know if, because that's not really considered um real estate is is really considered like personal property like the, the mobile home mm-hmm. um from a tax basis mm-hmm. okay you know, from a tax basis it's not considered but based on like the inspection i would think you would want to approach it as oh, yeah. real estate for sure because it's everything. someone's home someone's yeah. going to yes. live there mm-hmm. you got to make sure everything is, is oh good yeah to definitely go. still has yeah. the same systems yeah same mm-hmm. system mm-hmm. that big five yeah, yeah. I, I really I really appreciate you guys coming out and um I know you got everything on your shirt so people can no, find yeah, out how to, how to check you out but um you know talk about your social medias and how they can follow you and you know and check you guys out and obviously they can reach out to you. Yes sir. Um but for the people who probably listening okay how can they get in contact with you? Okay so uh, I'm Mr. Dream Home Inspections mm-hmm. on Instagram and she is Mrs. Mrs. Dream Mrs. Home Inspections <laughs> on Instagram. <laughs> Uh, we're also on Facebook. Uh, I'm Jock Mountain, J A C Q U E S, Jock mm-hmm. Mountain. And then if you want to call us, 678 516 9467. And our inspection website is Dream Home Inspection with no S, just dreamhomeinspection.org. Mm-hmm. And everything is on there. So we talk about commercial, residential, the 203K, the class. I even wrote an ebook. Mm-hmm. Man, I wrote the ebook. Let me mm-hmm. tell you why I wrote the ebook. Once again, demand. Right. Mm-hmm. I've gone to so many homes over the years where I said, if somebody had to just told them this was wrong, they could have fixed this before I got here. Right. Mm-hmm. So I wrote the ebook last month. I just called it Home Basics 101. Like these are just simple things you can know, as you said earlier, that could save you thousands of dollars. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So now a question I didn't ask yes. is, what if somebody is listening to this and they stay somewhere else, right? Mm-hmm. Let's say they stay in North Carolina or one of the surrounding states, mm-hmm. um, 
do you got and they don't have a um they don't have like certifications in that state right you know can they come and join the class and come down here and spend a week with you guys yes. and, and learn and grow? Most is that definitely. something you guys have yes, seen? Sir. Yes, sir. We can do that. And we can do it. Uh, we train the lady in Miami right now. Mm-hmm. She's in so, our mentorship. Yeah, yeah, she's in our mentorship program. Yeah. So okay. we can train people in other states. Okay. And then we direct them to what they need to do for their state license. Mm-hmm. But we break it down and make it simple enough that they can digest it and use it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, guys. I want to thank you guys for tuning in. Yeah. I'll see you guys next week. This is great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it.